What's up and welcome to the Indie Credible Podcast, Season 2, Episode 8, a weekly podcast where we get together and chat about the world of indie gaming. We go for all the indie games we've been playing, we go for the latest indie game news, uh, and we cover our main topic. Today's main topic is a little bit different because it's not directly linked to an indie game per se, but it is linked to kind of the gaming community, industry in industry, general. Industry, more than the community. Um, we're going to be talking about review scores. Uh, as a channel, website, whatever you want to refer to us as, we dropped review scores. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through my thoughts on that and how our reviews are now going to be published as well as um genuine emails i've had i'm not going to use any names this Ooh. week about um the, our change to review policy how we do reviews and how some companies are actually quite annoyed that you don't do scores yes but i will get into that more detail and again i won't use any names because i don't i'm not going to shit on people but yeah um this after reading emails there's genuine reason why some people do want scores but we're going to yeah. that and, uh, uh, later on um as always i'm tom you can find me at <laughs> uh, and with me is Lewis from at What's Up Woody. Well, 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 no, my name's Tom as well, and you can find me at Insanity. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the Two Tom Show. <laughs> That's it, Two Toms. Two Toms is too many. Um, <laughs> Should we say who we really? Yeah, are? yeah. I, I, no, I'm, I'm not really. You can probably guess by my voice, or even by looking at me, maybe. Uh, just call me Lewis, uh, and I'm what's at What's Up Woody. And, and our dad, otherwise known as the Dice Bear, from yeah. at the Dice Bear. Thank God the two times aren't here. Yeah, they're not here. Yeah. Um, how's the week been? Yeah, it's been all right. It's been busy as hell, but it's been pretty good. And I actually got to play some games this week. Second week in the new job as well, isn't it? Second week in the new job. Parents' evenings kicking in, so, you know. Yeah. Busy oh, as, but oh, I actually got evening. to play. So, so nice. Good. Well, go on. You seem excited, so I want to... I am. Um, well, I've, I've, I've had a real mixed week. <laughs> I know. Right? I've had not. a real mixed week. <laughs> Don't so, play this. So, Lewis <laughs> sent me... A game beginning of the week, end of I last think so. week. I, I can't remember what it was exactly. I, I've had like four codes come through this week, and I sent two over to Tom Smith. Yeah, uh, just said play these. What yeah. is it? I was like, you find out when you turn it on. Like, <laughs> well, I got one of those, and it's called Crimson Keep. Released and on Tuesday. Released on Tuesday. Tu- okay. Yeah. Good for you. Bully for you. <laughs> well, when you play it, it's a first-person rogue game. This isn't a rogue light. So when you die, you restart with nothing. You restart right again, right back at the tutorial, which is slightly annoying. Well, not just right back at the tutorial, right back at the beginning menu where you have okay. to go. So no game, powers, no currency, nothing carries over. Nothing carries over. No, you, so you can't buy abilities to again. make it easier. It's just a flat. No, out, it's a flat out single rogue. run game. Yeah. Okay. So you, the which, only way you progress is you get better. Yeah. I like the approach, but carry on. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. And as you go along, you can you'll earn bits which increase your powers. You'll get new weapons. There's lots of nice ideas there. I don't mind a rogue. It is procedurally generated. Okay. So when you go down the hole, you're going to enter I can a see new map I did it on again. A rogue because well, you're going to be playing it for a lot. A lot. Yeah. But it's it's when you play, you have two floating hands in front of you. Like you get when you're watching someone else play a VR game. So as, as I started playing it, I was like, hang on, this is a VR game. You know, everything about it reeks a of a VR game. To the point that the hit detection is poor. Like you get in VR in some of the early VR games. There's lots of glitches and issues. You know, my game bugged out many times. Um, there's just... It's just crap. I'm sorry, I can't. I was so fucking bored in it. How there long were, there into a couple the of times. Sitting? Three, four minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> well, I got past. I got past the tutorial. I dropped down into this first uh, in, into the well. You're always doing it in the same way. You go in the dungeon and you're running through, and there's a monster, and I hacked it, and I killed it, and I picked something up, and I got a new weapon. There's another monster. I hacked it down. Another monster came to attack me. And I missed a couple of times and that was fine. It was me missing. And then I'm busy trying to swipe at this thing and it wouldn't die. And it wouldn't die. And then, and then I died. And then it started again. And it stopped me right back at the menu. And I was like, okay. So then it took me into the tutorial. Which isn't very long. But you go, you smash your box, you kill a monster. You throw a weapon at a monster. You talk to a guy in the thing. There's a stone to the right which anyone's playing. Looks like you can't go through it. But you can literally walk through it. It's a massive boulder. It's not actually there. You walk through it. There's a shield on the other side you can pick up. I learned this in my in my first run through because when I play games, I play to break them first time. Yeah, yeah. I don't play them as like, oh, let's just go. I go, right, how can I fuck this game up? Because I find that more fun. Um, uh, and I found out the, there's a hole in the wall with a massive empty room. And I thought, oh, maybe on future run throughs, there'll be stuff in here. Nope. <laughs> 
No, there's a shield. You get the shield, you drop down. It's a brand new world. Um, you get down there. There was one point, there was a big gap in the floor and a log with a monster who could throw fireballs at you. I, had, You can throw your weapon once and then you've got to wait for the bar to recharge to be able to throw it again. But for the bar to recharge, you have to do damage to an enemy. Okay. The only enemy was this bastard on a log who, if you go close, sent out a burst wave and fires you backwards and then fires things at you. There was literally nothing I could do and this was in the first room. And I was like classic procedurally generated bollocks that you have to put up with fine i'll die come back out hit the tutorial smash a few barrels pick up a bit kill a monster throw a weapon at the monster talk to the guy sitting there go through a rock pick up the shield drop down the hole to start the game again drop down there there's a monster slashing at him nothing's hitting him stupid wavy hand that's only on a wrist it's a fucking vr game the graphics are a bit shit everyone's got this sheen to them Killed a few of them, went along, read a book, 50 monsters came at me, I died. There's no way of defeating 50 monsters when they run around you. There just isn't. It's a game where you're supposed to be able to dodge and be more tactical. But when the room is the size of a shoebox with two pillars in it that get you actually jammed in corners, you're dead. So I died, went back to the main menu, went in, smashed a box, picked up an item, killed a monster, threw an axe at another monster, talked to the bloke, went through the rock, picked up the shield, dropped down into the well. Same fucking tutorial again and again. To play just... A boring, not well put together FPS hack and slash. It's, it was just. That's a shame. I'll tell you what it reminded me of. It reminded me of a game that you would make first. So these two guys, it, it may be their first game. And it's like, you know, if that was how it was sold to me, like, the, so if you came up to me and went, Dan, I've made this game, can you give it a go? I'd be like, you know what, you've done a fucking damn good job. Well done, mate, because that's really good. That's a good starting place. Now let's polish it, let's make it better. Yeah. Let, we can't release it yet. It's not at yeah. that level. And this game just... Got I was, released. And I was just bored. I was okay. like, oh, God. It's a shame. It's a saturated market anyway. Anything that has Rogue or Rogue Light yeah. is saturated. But, I mean, if you're going to do that, like we've said with all of them, your combat has to be tight. Oh, yeah. It has yeah. to be. Especially with a dodge game. It just... It wasn't. It was just flawed. And I was like, oh, God. God, please don't. Please don't do this to me, indie games. I don't want this. Yeah. And then I played The Witness, which is the game on PS4. So I have played it. Yeah. I haven't finished it. I played five hours of it. Okay. I appreciate how good the game is. It's right. amazing. I appreciate the depth of the puzzles. Right. It's just not a puzzle game for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on that one. Yeah. I got fucking bored. Okay. I was about an hour in. And I'd completed the first area, the cherry gardens, the, the one with the trees and the apples. Yep. And then I went to this other area where there's a big washing machine inside a hut. And then I went off to the desert and I'd completed all of those. I was doing the puzzles like, this is quite nice, but yeah, there's a screen. I move a puzzle around. Where's my story? And I got bored. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go run and see what's around the island. And it's a beautiful island. Yeah, yeah. It's very pretty. And it was like, there's nothing here. And then I ran into this small town. And in yeah, the yeah. middle of the town, there's a statue of this jester guy. And I was, and it creeped me out straight away. I was like, hang on, what the fuck is this? This is weird. And I ran around and had a look at him. And then I noticed there was a mountain in the background. And because I wasn't playing the game properly, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to see what's up there. I ran to the top of the mountain. And there were all these statues up there of people in different positions. There's a guy preaching to some of them while they're busy doing some sort of experiment. Okay. And I was like, oh, hang on, there's something more here. And then I noticed there was a doorway in in the side of the mountain and and I walked in it and the, the island's fake okay it's not it's it's reminding me of um, you remember Lost the yeah. first season of Lost where all of a sudden everything just flipped on its head and I was yeah. like hang on there's a there's a whole different story here there's something fucked up going on and that intrigued me so I went back and I started doing the puzzles again so I'm like right I'm going to get these lasers that will point up what's going on what's happening and I was going through them, and the puzzles are really good. Yeah, there's some very really interesting fun. visual the guy made ones. Braid. Oh, with this, I found his sandcastle. Oh, really? The braid sandcastle is <laughs> in there, so that makes more sense of yeah. why the braid sandcastle is in it. It's the guy who I can't remember his name now. Um, no, I, the one who spat his dummy out on. No, no, that's the guy who made Fez. Ah, oh, it's the Fez guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy who made Fez refused to make Fez too. Yeah, I, fish. Fish, yeah, fish, fish is the yeah. guy made fez. I can't remember, I can't this remember the guy. But no, carry on, yeah. But I started doing that, and then I hit the same pattern again. I was like, okay, I'm getting it now. And I was on top of this tower, just dicking around again, because yet again, I was like, I appreciate what's going on here. And then it did something that just took it to a whole new level for me. 
I was looking down and I noticed Jonathan there was this. Blow. Ah, there we go. There was a black hole yep. on the floor, and the walls going around the place. They looked odd. There was something odd about them. So what you do when you solve a puzzle, you press, I, I believe it's X, and it fre freezes the screen. You get this small circle, and you can place the circle mm -hmm. at the start line. I went, well, go on. I put it on the hole in the ground, pressed X, and all of a sudden it went ping, and I drew across where the um, walls were, and it it was a it was an environmental puzzle yeah, that you didn't even know there, and it started this column up, and I was like, hang on. And then I found underneath the um, windmill, there's a there's a um, there's a cinema screen and you solve a puzzle on the cinema screen and it played this video and the video was it looked just like an old open university video where they talked about the difference between art and science and I watched a good 20 minutes of it and it was a really good clever video about the difference between um, how artists view the world and us looking at the art is actually a third hand view whereas science is a first hand view of the world that's you know yeah. we can't be following artists we've got to be following science and mathematics and and then there's then there are a series of five videos i didn't watch them all but i've been finding briefcases yeah. which unlock how to get the next video oh, okay. and the briefcases are hidden through bits i didn't get and there's that, just that so fucking much there i'm like wow this world is incredible oh, it's fleshed out there's there, there was um i remember reading there was a puzzle that people couldn't solve for a good few months there was people oh, right. knew where it was yeah, no one could solve the puzzle. Brilliant! Um, I could be stuck on that for a few months. So. I've the solutions out there now if you wanted, but um, oh no, no, I but no, the um, the like like I said, I love the way that the puzzles, like you said, you, something didn't seem right, and you, I'd, I'd be like, that doesn't quite look right. I mean, there'll be a puzzle in there, and I was like, oh, yeah. like, and everything is just so. It's probably the best puzzle game I've ever played. Yeah, I'm putting it up there. The as thing the is, I'm not a I've huge played. puzzle game fan. Right. And it was a case of, I was playing it, and I was about five hours into it, and I was like, I feel like I've not chipped anywhere near this game. And I was just, I made the decision, I was like, if I stick at this game, I need to put in another 15 hours, or 10, 15 hours, I reckon, to get right. everything. And my, I, I have to do everything in a game, or I get really itchy feet. Or I was like, I just dropped it, and I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to drop the game because I, I appreciate it. It's just not my kind of game. I like puzzle games like Limbo or Inside that can be done in like two hours and they have that wrapped up there. Yeah. But I'm not saying it's a bad game. I brought it when it just after it launched. Um, I would recommend it to anyone to go and play it because it's how a puzzle game should be done. Also, it's got a run button. So anyone who's got those uh, walking sims out there, fucking run button. It does it. It's brilliant. <laughs> But it's also free on it's uh, free, yeah. PS Plus. It is. And I was just like, seriously, it's, it's why I was a little bit late today. Yeah. Because you were like, oh, get round for half ten. And I'm busy <laughs> playing. It was quarter past ten. I was like, shit. <laughs> I was busy solving puzzles because it no. just got me. Yeah, no, it, it, like I said, it's good. If you like puzzle games, you'll yeah. love it. And if you want a game, just to sink yourself in. It's very tranquil. It's very oh, relaxed because yeah. you kind of sit back. It's very pretty. And you sit back and you kind of like play a puzzle. Puzzles aren't stressful. I, that, that's one thing I will give it big praise for. So many puzzle games were just like, oh, what the fuck is this solution? Yeah, why am I not getting this? Was this one almost where it's so pretty? I was just like, I don't know what's going on. But yeah. I wasn't getting annoyed at the game. I was trying to... And it encourages you to be experimental, wouldn't you agree? Like, it encourages oh, you yeah, to big be time. like... And because you're not close... It's not a linear puzzle game. The no. very first area is... Yeah. Because it's teaching you, but then from then on, you can explore the island and go wherever you want. So if you're stuck on a puzzle, you go, I'll come back to that later, and then you'll go do a puzzle elsewhere. And that those puzzles will kind of teach you yep. how to then solve the puzzle. And so you kind of, you end up learning that you've got to do certain areas. Well, you don't have to, but you, if you've done the other areas beforehand, yeah. it makes those yeah. ones easier to go through. I might, I might give it another go. I've got a lot to play at the moment anyway, but yeah. I, might, I might give it another go. I was um, that. I mean, that was my last game, but that really did sort of like go. You keep whoa, keep playing it. I'm going to platinum it. Really? Yeah, I've decided. Wow, I'd like to see that because I know there's a puzzle in there that people. Well, I hadn't realised that. <laughs> so I, I know thought, there's I a puzzle in there. That ahead of... um, I know how to do it because I watched the video on it. Because I, I, after I dropped, stopped playing it, I remember a, I think it might have even been on IGN. It come up saying how to solve the witness's toughest puzzle, and someone come out and said that no one solved this puzzle for about three, four months, and this was shared by someone on Reddit. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's... I've been watching it being like, that's ingenious. Okay. That is ingenious. I know there are um, supposed to be lots of secrets in it oh, as well. Oh, there's tons of secrets, of, 
tons. But um, it is a lovely world, and I can't wait to just spend time exploring it. Nice, nice. Especially if you had a tough day at work, it's quite nice. Oh, to come it's, and it's wonderful. Chill out in. Yes, nice. a good thirty minutes, just some puzzles, just a nice. Nice yeah. sunny beach, yep. nice trees, no monsters. I'm not having to worry about being attacked. I've just got to get my See, brain. The opposite, I right. use Anthem as, that, as my thing for that. <laughs> to relax. I come home and I'm like, oh, I've got work to do, but I'm going to have like an, an hour reset. Yeah. So I put my javelin on, I go out, kill some new rocks, and then come back and I'm done. I'm like, yeah, cool, jump off. Um, anything else you played? No, that, that'd be, no, that's it. Okay, so I've got three games. I'm going to blitz through the first one quickly because. Uh, later today the preview will be up and I had to be very tactical and clever on the preview on what I could say and couldn't say so I really planned around the preview Right. Okay. I'm not going to go into big spiel now because I don't want to say anything I'm not going to say yeah okay um, but I know, what I, I know what I can and can't say so that's I'm talking about A Plague Tale Innocence I've had the very nice oh, pleasure yeah. of playing the first three I don't want to say levels or missions because the first three stages sections of yeah. the game um, and uh, the preview will go up. The preview has B-roll footage along to it. We weren't allowed to record any of our own footage and put it up. They sent us footage we were allowed to use. So it has B-roll right. footage with it. So I will say, if you do watch preview, they don't directly link what I'm saying because I can't. Um, right. But with that said, the game, A Plague Tale, genuinely blew me away. <laughs> I love it. You're like, I can't say what? Oh, no. no I can, so I can say it blew me away. I can say this this game has become one of my most anticipated games this year. Because I, well, you know I've been so, sort of like, yeah. Straight off it. the bat, and I say this in the preview, the biggest compliment I can give the game, yeah. only playing, remember the first hour really-ish, is I've never felt this emotionally blown up by a game since playing the opening of The Last of Us. Okay. Like, this game hits you in the face. It just goes, I'm taking no fucking prisoners. You're coming with me. And it's just like, fuck. Like, there is a lot going on in the game. Yes, your concerns about it being linear yeah. were correct, but only in terms of it's linear and it, same as The Last of Us is linear. It wants to tell a story. It wants to usher you through this world. So it sets up this linear fashion like that. Um, gameplay opens up certain sections where it's like they are quite linear, but it opens up into mini open sections where there's like two or three ways to get to point B. Yeah. Um, that can be like through rats. Um, I should probably give context. A, a Plague Tale Innocence is basically it's set in France which is a real cool thing because I'll get to in a minute. Um, so set in France you play yeah. as um, a sister who's caring for her brother. Something happens at the beginning that's very emotional and like wow. It throws you into this um, plague ridden world and you don't know tons at the beginning. I can't say what you do know at the beginning, but you don't know tons at the beginning. All you know is you need to get to these points and find out what's going on. But as you're going along, you're always being... You're never like, why am I doing this? As soon as you feel like that, you're like, ah, okay, this happened. This cutscene's happened. Wow. The game looks absolutely stunning. Like, incredibly good. Right. The rats look fucking amazing. And they are horrible. Like, harrowingly horrible. <laughs> And that works into the the reason the game's so impactful is they have done an amazing job of humanizing everything. The kids feel like vulnerable kids, and the emotions they share when they so, for example, to get past one of the puzzles is like a guard. Yeah. Now the only way you can get rid of that guard is to set it up for the rats to kill the guard. Right. And there's a big hesitation from the kids, and they're like, "I don't want to do this," and then they do it, and you're walking slower because they're like they're, the girl's crying her eyes out because she's like I just killed this like and yeah. it's this emotion and you're sitting there like don't worry you had to do it you <laughs> had to do it it's for yourself just keep going love. just keep going now the reason it's good that it's in the French stuff at first I was a little bit jarring by the French accent and all that the reason I actually like it is because it's not another fucking America Saves the World story and that's why I genuinely like it it feels the reason it feels more grounded I think is because but couldn't have they could they not have done it in London? They could have done, but how many play games have been in London? There's loads of like vampire games or play games or always set in London. But Fra it's France. Why the reason France, France works is because because traditional France is very rickety little mini side streets and all things like that. It okay. kind of feeds into that because there's lots of grime and, and, and unhygiene in the area and I really have to be careful what I say. Stuff happening. Is there a guy named Pierre with some brie yeah. and onions around his head? Yeah, uh, like power-ups. You can buy up to 
six cloves of garlic and you get a full <laughs> cloves of garlic, your life bar goes up and things like that. No, I'm serious taking a piss. Honestly, the game blew me away. I, I was looking forward to it anyway. Yeah. I sat down and was like, this game is either going to blow me away or it's going to be yeah. shite. It's simple as that. Yeah. The mocap is fecking amazing. I mean, well, after because it was last week we saw the, the, the story, like, the story teaser, and I've seen more of the story, and now. that is the first time I was like, "Oh, I've seen this more of the story." I can tell you off air <laughs> about okay. more of the story. Okay, I can't say anything here, but it's this is a game that I'm you're going to finish it. I'm I don't know how long it's going to be. Judging what I played, and it's like I can say this because it's complete speculation. Yeah, I I'm going to say around about between a six to ten hour story, which I think will be okay. good. Um, it's going to be a game that when the campaign finishes you're going to put the controller down and just be like wow I just I don't know what to do now like <laughs> you're going to be emotionally drained like do we know do we know if there's going to be are there going to be like multiple endings do we know any are you allowed to say anything like that I don't do know, we know I honestly don't, don't know, know that question okay. um, yeah the all I can say now is if you like Again, grounded, humanized stories, like genuine stories. Because yeah. the hour I played, I'm probably, if I'm being honest, I've not been told I can't say this, but about f- 10 to 15 minutes were cutscenes. Right. Which were great. I know people might go, oh, but remember, I'm only playing the first hour in the whole context thing. Yeah. But it's it's characterization. That's what the cutscenes give you. They give you this characterization to these kids that you're following along. So as stuff's happening, you're like, and so many games go, Oh look, there's this new person, I and mean, then two minutes later would kill the person. I mean, you're like, well, I don't give a shit about that. Like, yeah, I met him. This when you meet people, when stuff happens, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> but could the mocap so good? I mean, we're not talking Hellblade good because yeah, like, Hellblade was like yeah, Annie Circus next level. Yeah, this is very good, very convincing. Voice acting is very good. The French accent takes a little bit of getting used to. I'll be honest, um, but. Obviously, if you're French or Canadian, it won't take you that long. But No. No, genuinely, I'm so stoked for this game now. That's me being a narrative whore. Um, <laughs> like, loving a kind of a narrative game to sink into. But yeah, I'm not going to yeah. say more. The, the preview's up now, or it will be up. It'll be up by the time you watch this anyway. Uh, go watch that, and it has actual gameplay footage of me talking a lot more about certain things that happened. But anyway. Um, Eternity. The oh, last yes. Unicorn. Yes, yes. Jumped onto this. There's a what is video up now, which I played through the opening in 30, 35 minutes of the game. Uh, you know, this game genuinely shocked me. This is it good? Okay, is it good? It's it's close to being good. It's not great. That's now, not why I was asking. I was not expecting it to be great at okay, all so after I, seeing it. I think it's good. Yeah. There's the biggest issue with the game is actually something that makes the game quite nostalgic. Oh, okay. Uh, it has a fixed camera system. Yeah, so, I have no problem with that. I don't have a problem with it, but in an RPG game, and your brother will back me up here, for example, I know Devil May Cry isn't an RPG game, no. but it suffers from the same thing that Devil May Cry suffered from, and I know this because I recently played through them, that you'll be in a combat section, and all of a sudden you'll be in between cameras, and you're like, where, where are they? I can't oh, see yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm dead. Because the game's punishing. It's hard. It's, I thought it was a turn-based combat. No, it's real-time it combat. Not? Real-time combat. Oh. Genuine RPG. Yeah. Like the story, okay, the, the, the I don't want to say saving grace, because that makes saying the game sound bad. Okay, so as soon as I opened it up, my first reaction in the What Is video was, wow, this game looks a lot prettier than the trailers gave it credit for. Oh, okay. It's not stunning, it's classic uh, Unreal. It has this weird kind of over reflective sheen on everything, yeah. which I find a lot of Unreal indie games End up have with. anyway. Um, yeah, the story is, I mean, there's a lot of reading. Yeah. I love that. So you, you, every time you go between sections on the map, uh, there's like a, it's probably like a 20 second loading screen, but I mean, it takes me two minutes because the, a new page comes up with lore. So I'm reading a lore. It's very Norse inspired. You're talking about, a lot about Norse gods. Um, the creature design is, or character NPC design is fucking amazing. I was like, yeah. looking at this lore of the forest and I was like, where is it? And I was like running up and there's this tree and it stopped and went to cut see. The tree turns around and it turns out it's basically fucking Mr. Tumnus on steroids. He's like, yeah. And I'm just like, that, that's a cool design. Like, I mean, I'm having fun playing the game. I'm two hours in. One thing I didn't know playing it, uh, it's not really a spoiler because it happens after about an hour and a half. You play as two characters. Oh, okay. You play as a dude who's a Viking who board, who come to the land to, to get treasure and all things like that. Yeah. His whole 
party had been killed and it's just him and he was about to give up um, but then the elf woman you play has saved him by giving him some water and all things like that you play as two characters um, I'm not that far in but it looks like their stories kind of they meet and they cross but they don't they're not playing as the same game they're playing two different games basically oh, okay uh, which is quite okay. cool combat is slick responsive which I know that sounds like people go well, it should be Lots of games don't get it right, and especially in any game taking on an, an RPG like this. Yeah. The combat has got a very nice evasive manoeuvre. How many hours did they say it was going to be? 10 to 12 hours. 10 to 12 hours, okay. Um, the reason I've stopped playing at the moment is because I've got Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> yep. Um, and I'm playing playing that. Um, but yeah, Eternity, if you, look, if you like old school RPGs, real-time combat RPGs, and you can take the kind of... Some of the weird little glitches that happen. Sometimes you walk through a branch and things like that. Then, yeah. Then, do you know what? It's it's a good game. It is a good game. It's a good little game. It's one. It's sixteen quid at the moment. If you ever see this for a tenner, I'd say, do you not grab it? Yeah. If you like Norse mythology. If you like Greek mythology, I would say check it out because there's a lot of lore in there and it's a cool little story. And he gets pet unicorns. Well, a unicorn. I've not found it yet. Um, <laughs> far, final one. Again, I'm not going to ages because there's a whole review up. I don't know if you saw the review. The, uh, yeah. uh, the Occupation. Well, this links into what we're doing later. Links into what we're doing later. I didn't score the game. I'm not scoring a game. And this actually, this is the game that I sat down and thought about over a coffee on my own. I'm not. We're not going to score games anymore. This, this is the one. You spoke to me about it a lot and I've been thinking about it for the last couple of months. But yeah. this was the game that made me decide it. Because The Occupation... We're very excited going into it. Now, as a narrative, from a narrative point of view, yeah, one of the best narratives I've ever played. Right. Because there is so much ownership on you. The game is so cool in terms of, you play as this investigative journalist who, basically, the game's split up into three parts. Now, what we were told at Res isn't completely true. It is true and it isn't true. Okay. So the real-time aspect isn't the whole game. So right. basically, you don't start four hours later, it finishes, which is what we were told at Res. Yeah. What happens is you have set pieces. So let's say there's three chapters, because that's what there is. Each chapter consists of an opening cutscene, then consists of a investigative journalism section, yeah. and then consists of an interview. Now, the basically what's happened is there's been a bombing in this area. Yeah. And you're an investigator looking into this company. There's straight away, there's signs of, of a conspiracy that... The person that been they're saying done it didn't do it. And was there was there more of a motive behind this bombing? What was the reason for it? They're trying to pass this act. I can't say what the act is because that's kind of the whole part of the game. Right. But they're trying to pass this act, and it is the bombing linked to that. It's very political. The world is so good at building up this propaganda. Like right. there's posters everywhere. Vote for this act. Things of like this. You're walking through Manchester, one of the best openings to a game ever. I get to close a canal lock. Walk over. I was like, this. Is so, I used to do this as a kid because when I was granddad, I can help. Yeah, I was I like, this is so cool. Like I've never <laughs> done this in a game. But then you're walking through, and then like after the bombings happen, there's like spray painting on the bridge, justice for the 23, because the 23 that were killed. So it's really kind of it's a it's a lived in world, which is yeah. adds to the game. So these the main gameplay part comes in the one to one and a half hour investigative sections. So basically, you're in this. It's a big building that's kind of a big circular building. Three parts to it. And that's the game's broken up. Chapter one's one part, chapter two's another part, chapter three's another part. Okay. And then these buildings, uh, you're basically, you got a meeting in an hour and 12 minutes. That is an hour and 12 minutes real time. You look at your watch and that is a minute in, in life goes by, a minute in the game goes by. Okay. So you have in that time, you have a meeting with that person. You start with one question in your journal to ask that person. Yeah. You can only get more questions by investigating and searching for clues. Okay. And then that builds up your journal, which has a very like a huge impact on the interview. Not just uh, more questions, and I'll get to that in a second. Moving through the areas, going through the events, kind of finding stuff, you have to find codes. I, I had notepads of just like codes everywhere with like code nice. markers. Now, there is a journal, but the issue is because the game's played in real time and there is a security guard who's patrolling, stopping, looking for the journal doesn't stop the game. It pulls your journal out in front of you. So it slows the game down. So having the code in front of me was a lot quicker. So that's yeah. why I was doing it. I was having the code. And I like doing that stuff. I had yeah, the code yeah, here. Yeah. And I was like, okay, uh, this person's computer, 
uh, they've got a coupon near the computer on the back of the coupon there's a code and things like that. and I'm finding another email and it says like I can't believe this person said this da, 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 da. I'm going to make sure when they're on that smoking break at this time oh I've got 10 minutes to get to their office get there so yeah. it's things like that it's very investigative which is I've not done in a game before and finding stuff is genuine mouth open moments like oh, shit and then when you get to interview people you can get them off guard and that's the real nice thing about it by learning information about them, they respond going like, oh, no, 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 that didn't happen. And you go, well, actually, I, I received an email saying this, things like that. Um, and they go, oh, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, um, yeah. Uh, and then it's basically you react how you want because it all boils down to one big decision at the end. And I'm not going to go into spoilers. Yeah. I will say one thing. My first playthrough, I couldn't choose one of the decisions. Oh, okay. Because I hadn't found the evidence. I needed hard evidence. And I got caught on f third act. So you get a four strike system. You get caught by a security guard. Security guard goes, slap on the wrist. Come on, man, you're not going to be up here. It's stri restricted area, sensitive information, you can't down to come. Second time, mate, you're taking a piss a bit now. He doesn't actually say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. right, get out of here now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be good if he was a bit yeah. of a geezer. All right, right, you dick. Come on, mate. I'm going to call security next time. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Third time, you get sent to security, head security guy, and he's like, look, you do this again, we're going to take your dossier off you, and we're going to kick you out of the building. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking won't do that. Fucking does do that. <laughs> I get caught. The game got cut short of 40 minutes. I couldn't do the final interview because I got kicked out of the building. They yeah. took my dossier, and then the final interaction, one of the guys was like, well, I know what you've been doing because I've got your dossier. And I couldn't choose the option because I didn't have the information. Oh, my And he God. had the information that I had. Yeah. He knew, so I couldn't... So many options were blanked out because I couldn't talk to him about him because he knew the answers because he had my dossier. Yeah. Which is annoying, but fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Um, so I played through the game again and said I was a lot more tentative and, and, and yeah. secretive next time. Now, you're probably thinking, what, what the fuck? This game sounds amazing. Yeah. And it that is it is amazing for that part. And in six months' time, the game probably will be amazing. The game is six months underdeveloped. Oh, okay. Genuinely underdeveloped. It has bugs all over the place. The stealth is janky as shit. Yeah. Um, I even had, like, so in the re review, I say there's a moment in the third act where I went into a server room and I had to boot up these servers. And as they're loading they're up, the like, hum, they kind of got caught. And then for 15 minutes, no word of a lie, I had this sound clipping over my whole game. Oh, my um, God. Which is really frustrating. And I said, and then the guy actually, the, the sound design guy from White Paper Games, got in touch with the review and said, look, I'm really sorry about this. Could you let me know where it is? Because I don't want people to experience it. So I want to make sure that the sound is best. Nice. Work. So I see exactly where it was. And he thanks. He's going to fix it. People have said on console they've not had that issue. Okay. Also, I must say, I was playing a pre-release build. Yeah. With that said, I still do think the game, it needs an update to its stealth mechanics. Yeah. You have the ability to like climb up stuff and climb into vents. It's very janky. You have to be like, the hitbox for where your camera has to be to climb up is all over the shot, which would be fine if you weren't being... Not chased, but if you weren't, if you didn't see a, oh, that's fine. If you didn't see a flashlight, it's the battery started going on, I think. Oh, okay. If you didn't see a flashlight coming across the door to know the security guys come in, you need to to um to to get up there quickly. Yeah. And then you're trying to get up there, and he's like, find you, and you're just like, fuck's sake, he found me because of fucking yeah, climb yeah, yeah. mechanics. Um. So yeah, that's if I had to score the game, basically, what I was saying at the beginning. It would have to be quite a low score because it doesn't work very well in terms of a game. It's underdeveloped. It's but with those fixes, place. it's going to be a yeah, and beast I, of a game. That's why I don't want to score it because, and I say in the review, if you're if you can look past some janky bugs, if you can look past some weird glitches that go on, there is one of the best stories I've played through here, and one not, the reason it's so good is it feels so real. It, yeah, it, it's it's set in 1987. And I wasn't doing a playlist to it, but there's actual really good music in the game. So I okay, cool. That's why I didn't do a playlist yeah. to it. Um, and where it's set 97, it, it's tackling real world things now. Like you walk past people, and people will be like, "That that immigration law, what what the hell? Get those bastards out!" Oh, we've been banging on about like, immigration, but in this that happens in the game. Fucking and they decades. don't they don't care. They're like, "Get those bastards out of here!" I don't want yeah. those people in the country. Like, uh, but it's it's although people play that and be like, "That's." That's rude. You can't say that. It's doing it as as community or as a memory community would speak. Yeah. They, they wouldn't like people aren't going to be politically correct when they're chatting at work to their best mate. Like, and it, that's what it does. 
Um, and it, it throws this complete lived in realized world at you, it makes you go, here's an amazing narrative if you're willing to find it. I want to play through the game again because there's still stuff I don't know answers to. Um, I will play through the game again once because what I'll do is when I hear about more patch to it, I'll play through it again and on a podcast, I hopefully can try and say, the game's fixed. Go play it. Go play it. Go get it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the occupation. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. I really like the sound of it. I'm a little bit disappointed that what they told us wasn't the thing, but then again... I can see why they didn't because the, the cutscenes are very good and they, they actually add a story to it. And so they... Yeah. yeah. I, I know what you mean, but... Yeah, I mean, five five and a half hours was my playthrough. My first playthrough, six hours was my second playthrough because I didn't get caught. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Steve. That's actually his <laughs> is name. That, is his Steve. name Steve? Brilliant. Fuck, I bet he's Steve from Tom yeah, Black. Yeah, Tom's like, he's yeah, got a little eye map belt. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you see my belt? Uh, I caught you with my belt. Um, <laughs> should we go on some news? Let's do it. Let's go in some news. Uh, okay. Sorry if the light dipped off halfway there. I just I mentioned the we, we're using a light to light it up, and um, when the battery gets to fifty percent, it, it drops a little bit. So it's a bit annoying. I don't know why, but I, it's my fault I didn't charge it. Uh, so we kick off with American Fugitive. Yes, American Fugitive um, has received a twenty nineteen release window. I never even heard of the game, so that's cool. Um, you saw the trailer at the beginning. I saw the trailer. Uh, you guys yeah. can see the trailer now. And due to Insanity, uh, who was on the show a couple of weeks back, um, the trailers are now going to loop the whole time we're talking about the game. Because nice. he wants to, so you can see more of the, of the gameplay. So, American Fugitive is um, an isometric uh, adventure game. I don't want to say action, I don't know how much action. I'm sure there's action in there. It looks like there's action. It jumped over, a car jumped okay. over a bus. It's fucking full of Isometric action, action <laughs> adventure game. He plays Will Riley who's been framed uh, for their fathers for the murder of their dad. Um, you basically escape from prison and you have... Um, the idea of the game is you're trying to find the killer. You're trying to yeah. free your name, or clear your name, and, and find the killer. It's developed by Fallen Tree Games uh, and being published by Curve Digital. It's coming to PC, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's set in the 80s. I think the game... Looks really cool. It looks like something we've not had for a while. Well, as, as, as you were saying before, it looks like one of the original Grand Theft Autos, except just slightly more. The yeah. camera's tilted down instead of straight above. It's got that real nice mix to it. Um, yeah, yeah. I really, I really like the look of it. It's yeah. going to be one of those ones that the looks car chase fun. Seems the cool. car chase is wicked. I love jumping those. over a building. It really reminds me of playing with toy cars when you were a kid, because <laughs> it's got that same sort of looking like yeah, jump, boom, shit's gone. I'm going to throw the car out the window. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be cool. And like a revenge story is always always good when it's done well. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. Like, you can't beat a good revenge story. Um, but yeah, no, American Future Two, no set release date yet. But twenty nineteen is a release window. Uh, next, we move to Rico, another game that got announced for this week. Um, it's releasing this week. <laughs> it's releasing oh, right, on cool. the fourteenth <laughs> of March. Um, Rico is a first person shooter buddy cop game. Offers online co op and local split screen. Um, the game, I don't know how this works in terms of, I'm guessing it's not real, well, it's guaranteed it's not real time, because you have 24 hours to solve a case. That's the idea of the, the story of the game. Right. 24 hours to solve a case. Uh, they These cops look more like um, lethal weapon cops than they do <laughs> oh, detective yeah. cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going to be kicking in doors, blowing stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Um, jumping out of buildings. I wonder if Briggs might even be a playable character. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that would, yeah. Bertar and Briggs. Um, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch again on the 14th. Uh, a cell shade, art style to it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, definitely an older graphic looking style. I wasn't blown away, but I, there was something there that I was like, oh, "This could be, this could yeah, be cool." It kind of. It was really weird because in the the trailer that you're watching, they don't actually show a lot of the first person. In the trailer, they kind no, of do it at the, the end. Cameras, at the end. yeah. So I wonder if there's like you finish a level, they have, you know, like racing games show a camera. Of oh my god, it'd be awesome if, if they, they did do... a camera run through of how you made it. So if well, the levels so are many, a set length, there were so many camera shots that weren't first person. Yeah, that makes me wonder if they would do that because that'd be hilarious, especially when you know you've got the two of you playing sc- pl- split screen. You've bulged it up all the way through, and then you get to watch you guys kicking doors. The first person shooting stuff reminded me of like Time Crisis. I know you don't actually have a light gun. Oh, yeah. But the way it looked, it yeah, looked yeah. very much like... There's um, a slightly arcade cheese aspect to the it, The split screen there? as well is yeah, yeah. cool. I like. I would like to play the split screen on Yes, game. definitely. Um, nostalgia rules, some of that. <laughs> um, next, the game you have played, I've not played, and you're going to be playing, 
She remembered caterpillars. Is remembers or remembers? Uh, 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 it remembers, I believe. Sorry. She remembers caterpillars. Uh, it's coming to a Nintendo Switch. It's available now on PC. Um, and it's on, it might be on PlayStation. I'm not too sure. Sorry about that. Um, but it's coming to Nintendo Switch on the 28th of March. It's um, quite a short puzzle, puzzle game. Uh, yeah. It consists of 40 mini different puzzlers. Uh, it's based around grief and sadness. Yes. It's a very sad game. It has some stunning hand-drawn art. Yeah. Um, and it's very well received. When it did initially release, it's very well received. You actually played it at an event, didn't you, a little while back? Yeah, but it was at rest, wasn't it? Yeah. It was at rest. And yeah, and when I played it there, I was like, you know, this is a game I really want to actually get into because it was another one of these ones like... Um, oh, God, what's that one we, we played where the there were the musical instruments... You're going through the puzzles. Figment. 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 It was another one of the games where the story, the puzzles were part of it. That's that's how you play through it. But it was really about the story yeah. and the world created around it. And this, you know, the, the, I do remember that the title was one of the ones I was always like, yeah. She remembers caterpillars. What? <laughs> but but the actual game itself, yeah, was one of those ones it's I not really a want to sink my teeth into. Huge expensive game, either. I think it's about eight. Well, I think it's eight pound on place PC, so it's probably about. 45 quid on Switch. Yeah, that'd be, that sounds yeah. about right. 44.99 yeah. probably yeah, on Nintendo yeah. Switch. Um, <laughs> so, well, no, 28th of March. Uh, you're going to be playing it this week, aren't you? I am going to be playing it this week So, on uh, Switch. you can talk about it next week. Yeah, this is what um, I'll be doing during my break. Because there is no embargo. Oh, cool. Because the game's out on PC. There is no oh, embargo. Oh, sweet. So I can just uh, and there's no, about there's it. no special content for Switch. It's just coming to a Switch. Really? It seems like a nice place to play a little puzzle game. Yes. Yeah, um, I do like that. And also because I can play it at work. Based on your uh, recommendations, whether I'm going to pick it up or not. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, like I said, well, for a, eight quid, well, however, 44 40, 44 on the yeah, Switch. On Switch. <laughs> uh, next up, a game series that I have played one and two of, wasn't blown away by, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of, I appreciate what they tried to do, uh, but people have gone mad for this online this week, and that is Trine 4 was announced. Trine 4 by Frozen Bite Games uh, was announced. And it's going to get a 2019 release. Now, if you don't know what Trine is, Trine's a co-op game where you can play solo or co-op. There's three heroes. It's very much the Vikings game. Uh, so, uh, Banner Saga. No. No, the one from um, the old, old Blizzard Viking game. The three Vikings and you have to switch around characters. Lost Vikings. Lost Vikings, yeah. Um, it's very much Lost Vikings modern era where you switch between heroes. Each hero has a different ability. You move through the world. It's a puzzle game and... They they carried a 2.5, the art style that they like to kind of get that across in the press release. I think I read that phrase about a million times in the yeah. press release. Um, so it's called The Nightmare Print. It's coming to all consoles and Steam. Um, along with the release of Trine 4, if you've not played any of the others, there's going to be an Ultimate Edition releasing, which has 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Um, uh, I will say now, I don't know, depending on when you watch this, it might have been finished, but on PlayStation, the original 3 are on sale for £10 for all three. So if you right. wanted to play through them beforehand, it's probably going to be cheaper than what they charge for the whole yeah. collector's edition because it'll be a, a new release. Um, £10 for all three now. I've played one and two. Uh, they were okay. I finished one. I didn't finish two. It was... I wasn't blown away. But like I said, people have gone crazy for this online. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're Good same for them. Boat. You're same boat. Yeah. I'm the same boat. I'm like... I'm, I'm not... Uh, yeah. Remake Lost Vikings. Um... <laughs> Next, next up. piece I am excited by that. Next piece is awesome. Uh, we've already backed it. Have we? Yeah, Good. we have. Oh, we didn't go for the one I wanted. What I'll was explain it? the tears in a minute. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so a game we played uh, two years back at EGX, EGX. Uh, yeah. in the Left World Collection and was not only the best game in the Left World Collection, it was probably our standout game of the, show. Of the whole show. I mean, yeah. I really liked the same show I played Forgotten Anne. And, well, that's and where like I played that, Yoku's Island Express for the first was, time yeah. as well. And we played... Um, I'm going to Apex Racing or Racing, Racing Apex, Apex, whichever way around that fucking game yeah, is. Yeah, we did, and yeah. We played Bomber Crew. There were so many great games there. Fogs. That, was that the first time you, we played Fogs? Fogs, the most adorable game ever. Jesus. Uh, that game needs to come out. Please bring Fogs out. Um, well, they were anyway. just saying it's going to be at rest. I just saw that, yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, so Yucatan has got a Kickstarter campaign, which is live now. Now, we've played the game, so we can yeah. actually genuinely say... The game is really, really cool. It's a Me neo Mexican style yep. racing game um, where oh. you play through levels and they're kind of. It's a, so a time trial game, basically. Yes. You're trying yeah. to get to the end of the stage before time runs out. 
Uh, or no, not before time runs out. It, it ticks over, doesn't it? It's not. Before it ticks. Yeah, yeah. It ticks yeah, it ticks over because there's a high school leaderboard where you can. <laughs> I want a t-shirt and I wasn't good enough. Um, well, I'll get a t-shirt now. And um, <laughs> and yeah, so it's it has a really cool art style to it. It's responsive. It has a real cool mechanic where some later in levels you like come off a ramp. You have to then hold down was it L two. And then twist really. your car around. You've got to twist your car you in the air, with, and then play with like the gravity of the the levels, and it would flip around. The ca- for a, we played a build two years ago, and it, oh, was, it was really basic. It was just him on his own at that point. Well, no, he just hired an artist in like a couple yeah. of months before. So now there's three of them. It. Joe Bain is the main guy. Yeah, um, and it's still very much I think his project, but he's got someone doing sound and someone doing helping out of art. Right, and he's very much the programmer. I, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we walked away from it, loving the game. It was cool. Well, we we kept we kept going back to that game because it, I mean we we obviously we're quite competitive, yeah. so we ended up racing it. But it was the, the, what was really great about the game was how precise you could be. <laughs> you could complete it by just hammering across, but it was getting those extra milliseconds off, finding the way of like hitting the corner perfectly, so that when you twisted in the air, you'd slam on the other side yeah. right and then dodge through. And we seriously got into doing that. Like, and some of the particle effects now in the game, where like the the levels building in front of you with the cubes, yeah, just look really cool. It looks like it's really evolved further on. There is a demo available on the Kickstarter page, nice. um, which I recommend going and check out. But yeah, Kickstarter is live now. So there's several tiers. Um, the f- I'll go from thirty dollars up. Are we going to put a link to the Kickstarter? Yeah, below yeah, on it'll YouTube? be in, it'll be in links below on YouTube. Um, the thirty pounds, sorry, not dollars. Thirty pounds tier is you get the game and you yep. get an art book, I think. A sticker book. So you get a sticker. Oh, sticker book. Yeah, sticker book. Um, to go with my other Yucatan stickers that I've got around yeah, my office. Uh, oh yeah, go up so I this one. <laughs> uh, you then I went for the fifty dollar one. You get a t shirt. Fifty pound one. Yeah. T shirt. Yeah. Sticker book. Right. Game yeah. and updates. Nice. The next one from this, I wanted to go for it, but I didn't want to get divorced. Uh, well, the last one I wanted to get more for, but we're going to... £200 yeah. gets you t-shirt, but it gets you the Millennium Edition, which is a PlayStation 1 case printed with the game, the disc and everything. of the And the artwork on the case looks so good. Did Tom show you it a little while ago? No. Have you not seen the case of the thing? I'll try and find it while I'm while I'm trying to talk because I'm not very good at doing show it. Me, show me after. Well, show me um, after. But. Yeah, it, it looks seriously cool. Uh, it is $200, but it, it's... Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. Eight thousand dollars. Sorry, eight thousand pounds. Eight thousand pounds. Eight thousand pounds. If a reach round. You want right. a custom built arcade cabinet. Oh my god. Sit down with steering wheel. What were you Yucatan game? Oh fuck. Yes. Fuck. I was like, okay. Oh my god. Let me see, okay. Sarah and I have been together. It's gonna to cost her eight thousand pounds of divorce. Yeah, so if I just use that money to buy the cabinet then she can't get divorced because she can't afford it exactly oh my god genius we're winners genius <laughs> um, no seriously it looks really cool it's custom built there's only one there is only one 8,000 tier oh. one person can buy it if genuinely as a indie credible if we're in a position to I would have been like yeah we get that oh, if we had an office I'd, that, that. I'd be like we get that and we'll put it in the art like, that'd be amazing seriously cool uh, it's very cool uh, so if you happen to be sat on 8,000 pounds and Don't you want to buy us a present yeah, uh, don't even yeah. buy it yourself. Just send so, it yeah, to us. If you want to buy us the eight thousand pound tier, we'll happily accept it, and um, we will become the best Yucatan racers in the world. Yes, simple as that. Uh, but no, link is below. Go check the game out. You can get obviously there are, I think ten pounds is the the, t- the cheapest tier where you get the game. Yeah. Um, which oh, will back be, it, back will it. Will be cheaper than it will release anyway. So. And we, is it just it just talking about PC at the moment, or is it goals like if we reach this amount of money, we're going to be? You know able to I, did put it on stretch stretch I did not check stretch goals. I did not check stretch goals. We have to look at that. Yeah, it would be cool on consoles. It definitely yeah. be cool on consoles. But um, I mean, like I said, we played the game before, so there's always risks around Kickstarter going Obviously. like games not being made. So we have to put that as a disclaimer. But I am ninety nine point nine 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 percent sure that this game is going to get released no matter what. Like. It feels like it's already got a build yeah, to release. Yeah, he's been working on it for ages. There's a real yeah. passion behind it. So and going to back really the game, game, yeah, going to back the game, even if it's not fully funded, I still, I'm, I'm confident we get a release. You know, the other game we played there when Yucatan was on and is actually out now, from the left field, Jetaromo or Jetaromo. Oh yeah, Jetaromo. Yeah. yeah, that came out pretty soon after, isn't it? Yeah, and it's on Switch now. Yeah, yeah. 
That's a, so there you so go. So there you go. You know, two good games that have come from that bit. Let's back it on Kickstarter. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, second from last piece of news. I thought it was last piece of news. It's not quite. No. Grimshade, a game I've been super psyched for. Another game that came from Kickstarter. I backed it when it was on Kickstarter. Damn, I wish I stretched mm. to the high one to get a t-shirt, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, I did get some posters that are going to be coming soon, though. Um, we all know the trick to get you to hire Kickstarter. It's plushies. called plushy. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, you put if a you plushy get... in there, guys. He's going to he's gonna back the 8,000. If, if it was a cabinet well, with thingy, a plushie. I got an email Monday or Tuesday saying my RE Legends plushies have just been dispatched, <laughs> but they're going to take 20 days to arrive. But where, so they're going to go on one of these shelves, oh, right? Yeah, brilliant. I, I reckon um, the one behind you because they get the most view in yeah, Aura. Definitely. But no, Grimshade, it was a Kickstarter game. Grimshade is a um, it's a turn-based JRPG with some cool mechanics where you have like almost like Final Fantasy tactics where you, in the combat, you can move your um, characters, your, your players, whatever you want to call them, the characters in the game, to a better position. Um, it's limited. Don't expect it to be like full Final Fantasy tactics. Uh, I don't know how it works. I've not looked into this enough to see if I move someone, does that take away a turn that I actually get to attack? Like I don't know how that works, yeah. but there is an element to that there. The um, It's got some very interesting looking characters, you pointed out. Yes. A badger. With yeah, guns. yeah. It's a very steampunk feel to it, but with, you know, yeah, badgers. Uh, this, and this is a classic style RPG. Yes. Like this, the general camera looks almost something like Baldur's Gate. Like, obviously... A lot yeah, more for the part. running around the world part, and then yeah. when you were in combat, it really did go to a more almost two D and drawn like um, sprites combat. Yeah. Like it, it has a lot going on with it. The, the game it looks really really cool. Um, yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely look good. <coughs> cool. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, battery died on the old battery. <laughs> My fault. Didn't charge it. But anyway, um, Grimshade. So it's got a release date for the twenty sixth of March. Only coming to PC at the moment. Right. Um, we will be having a review up for this game. Uh, it's a game I've been excited by. Yeah. I love JRPGs as it is. Um, but yeah, it does look really good as well. It, it looks to offer an, enough new to make the get the JRPG stuff feel feel fresh. Is the, kick, the Kickstarter straight. still going at the moment? Or no, is no, that no. Finished. Kickstarter's finished. It finished okay. a little while ago. Uh, oh um, yeah, of course it did. Of course yeah. it did. Uh, and the final game. We... <laughs> Just throw your pen around, man. Yeah. Final game we're going to look at. I've got to stop tapping because I keep noticing it taps the mic you do it all the time it's, it's like this one as well you always slam it into your yeah, hand I'm, I'm a fidgety little kid <laughs> I, 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 it's I the ADHD man it, it is yeah um, final game we're going to talk about Wrath uh, Aeon of Ruin yes Wrath Aeon of Ruin I put this up on the Indie Credible Discord uh, which you guys can join for one dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Indie Credible anyway I put this up on the uh, on the Patreon Discord because more, more for your brother yeah, because uh, I read the press release. Uh, spiritual successor to Quake, um, fast, slick, retro style FPS combat, and I was yeah. like, ah, he likes Quake. Put it up there. Then read into it more. The game is actually made in the Quake engine, yeah. the original Quake engine. Um, there's no set release date on the game yet. It looks, it looks really cool. Has this really cool uh, knife arm attachment that they're running around and slicing people up with, and okay. It looks super slick and fast, like Quake did yeah. back in the day. Um, looks like jumping's a thing, which apparently that was a big thing in Quake as well. Yeah, um, yeah. For those of people who like those games, I'm sure it's going to scratch the itch. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I'd love to. I'd love to pretend in no way. I was like, yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, whatever. Oh, that's it. It's 3D realms. 3D realms are making it. Yeah. I just remembered that. Yeah. You fucking shitting. No, me. 3D Realms. Okay, game. this is the greatest game ever made. We're talking about right now. Because yes, <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't clock that at first. It was only when Trev, one of our patrons, commented yeah. on it, saying, "3D Realms rock," and and then fucking, oh my god. I'm thinking 3D Realms are the guys behind Jim Rise Nukem. of Triads and um... Jim Nukem. Mm, I don't remember who did Duke Nukem. We'll have to look that up now. I don't think it was Duke Nukem. It may be. I may be getting that wrong. Come get some. Come get some. Oh yeah. Duke Nukem. Fucking going in the strip club and getting yeah. them to... Uh... Piggy piggy boobs. Everyone likes piggy boobs. Piggy They're boobs? like weird piggy faces, isn't they? And they had like boobs. Do you remember? No, they were women with their tits out. You had to fight pig cops. Oh yeah. Unless the confused. Nintendo version got rid of the women to like, like make it nicer. Um, no, no, Raph Aeon of Ruin. See the trade up there now. If you're a fan of classic style, slick, fast FPS games. <laughs> I can't um, spell realms properly. Definitely 
definitely check it out. Um, oh my god, sorry, I'm looking at pictures of it now. Yeah, they did. They did it was Jude Nicom. Nicom. I thought Who was I thinking of then? Um, and should we go on to our final topic? No, because I've just heard the greatest news ever. Who gives a shit about what else we're talking about? Yeah, yep. go on. Why not? Okay, so the final news, as I mentioned at the beginning, guys, um, is based around review scores in gaming industry. It's not going to be a massive final section, but um, for the last two years, in the Incredible have put scores at the end of their reviews. Um, we've scored out of 10, but we've done it on a point system, so like 1.2, which technically means we've scored out of 100. Um, Dan has always never never scored games. He's, he's no, I don't like, like it. Don't believe in doesn't it. doesn't like scoring it. You should read or watch the review... Hear the, uh, yes, for lack of a better term, the emotion, the thought in the reviewer's voice and the and the, It's not, it's not just dialogue. that. Giving it but, a number makes it sound like we've taken a scientific approach to it. Like that it's a, it, you know, this number is a fact. There's no yeah. way of getting around that. We've It's gone through a series of really strict... And no, reviews are always a personal thing. No. You know, we would always come towards a game in a different opinion. And you've got to, as as someone out there listening, you've got to think, okay, what does this person like? One of the great things about being indie credible is there's three of us, four of us, including Tom now and again. And you go, well, actually, I know Dan likes these type of games. So if he's going to be talking about, let's let, for example, Wrath, well, of course he's going to jizz over it. It's 3D Realms. It's made in the Quake engine. <laughs> you know that bias is coming. Whereas if you look at just, oh, Indie Credible 8, say it's a 10 out of yeah, 10, yeah. you're just going to like, well, obviously they've taken a really scientific approach to this. Fuck that, have I. I love games. We're gamers. That's why we do this. Yeah. So no, scores are bollocks. Yes. So I I, I was very much, when we started, for scores. Yep. I liked scores. Um, being someone who used to, who's read a lot of reviews, uh, I liked reading, for, but I, I was probably in the massively in the minority well, I would read the whole review. Yeah. Before I scroll down to the score, I would guess what they'd scored it and then yeah. go down and see what they scored it. And I quite liked that game. Um, and that's kind of where the scores for Indie Credible came across. Um, as I've kind of grown more into this, I, for lack of a better term, because we're not critics, but for this critic role in terms of we are criticising a game and, and critiquing a game. Well, I think we are critics. So, we're just not journalists. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's fair enough. That's we're, it. Yeah. So as I've grown more into this and... and Growing more into like my ideologies around critiquing a game yeah. have completely shifted and adjusted. And I now think the hardest thing to do in a review genuinely is put a score on it. Yeah. Because there are always things you're going to be like about a game unless you're playing Crimson Keep. Um, <laughs> and there are always going to be things you dislike about a game. And people will look at a score and be like, that's ah, a shit game. Yeah. Uh, think 6.8 shit game. Whereas a 6.8 can still be very good. It's just the fact that, do you know what, actually there was these two levels towards the end that were really bad and actually maybe you might quite like them, but you've not taken the time to read the review yeah. and see that's the case. I'm not buying a 6.8. No chance. Like, yeah. And it's just, it, so that's why we dropped it. But on the flip side of that, so I emailed out, I spent a blanket email out to all our um, press contacts yeah, just to keep them up to date because I don't want anyone to, to feel like we've all of a sudden changed because we yeah. were we basically just got accepted to Metacritic I had the email free so we're now part of Metacritic and our review scores now go towards Metacritic um, that was about two weeks ago <laughs> so <laughs> at I, that point you went now fuck it let's get rid of the scores yeah. so I emailed out to everyone saying I oh, thank you very much because basically when you're on Metacritic uh, I don't know if I can say this but fuck it there's no, I've not been told it's embargoed yeah. when you're on Metacritic um, you all of a sudden get a lot more press contacts contacting you because yeah. Metacritic has like a, a, a universal base so we had lots more people contacting us saying this 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 um, and so we I, I basically emailed out everyone saying this is what we're doing now uh, anyone watch the Ape Out or the Occupation review? You'll notice that it's not only the scores changed, the whole review thing has changed. Yeah. The way it is now is it used to be a four or five minute, quite sterile, heavily scripted, albeit a script we wrote. Yes. Video with just gameplay footage, and I was like, do you know what? We this is our part time, not even job. This is no. our, our our fun. We like doing this. Yeah. Playing a game is great. We love that. We love talking about games. What none of us like doing is sitting down and coming up with a formulated script that fits within a time limit and then offers a score at the end, and it's just frustrating. It it takes it actually adds some soundness towards playing that game. I yeah, personally think yeah. so. Uh, the way we review games now is we play the game, we then make some notes, opinions, whatever on it. We sit down on our own and we talk about it. 
10 to 15 minutes, chat about the game. This is what we like. Actually, you know what? This section was really bad, but some people who like this kind of game might actually like this. And we have gameplay footage playing on the back of it. We talk about it. We have the green screen with the game title behind us. And it's a lot more chilled. And I've already had a lot of comments on the occupation people saying, I so much prefer this approach. Yeah. And it's not because it feels like you actually connect with the reviewer. You're like, and you get, it gives you a chance to. With the viewer. The, yeah, the viewer. Yeah, you cool. know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but it gives you a chance to say, like, in the occupation, if you, I was saying, if you like this kind of game, then yeah. you'll love this. Yeah. It gives me a chance to say that without going, and this, and this, and this, and this. Blah, blah, blah. The graphics did this, and I really like the way they fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like our reviews are very much more catering for gamers now, not your casual gamer who's going to click on a three minute, four minute video. Skip to the end. What's the score? Uh, well, to be honest, your, your casual game is going to go to IGN. Yeah. They're going to scroll to the thing, they're going to look at the score, and then they're going to move on. Or yeah. they're going to watch the video. Because they're not going to be looking for indie games. No. Right? So, you know. I and, just realised. And our thing is to get the indie games going. Well, I didn't wrap up my main point of my blanket email. Oh, go on. Yeah, go for it. Blanket email. <laughs> I had some replies back basically oh, yeah, saying yeah, that's that... Where we were going. Uh, that um, they would be limited on what they could send us now because they they basically they work with people who who do scores and because especially indie games struggle to get enough attention so a lot of people now this is very much the minority again that replied to me mm. and i'm not hating or against them for doing it at no, least they're honest all. to me yeah. but they would turn around and basically said that we prioritize people who do score we prioritize people who are on metacritic and who score because they need that publicity. They need people to click on my Metacritic and go, oh, what, this game, a 9.2? I've not had heard of this game. So I'll go, I'll go check it out. A little bit like IMDb's top 250 movies. Like, Well, yeah, because, of course, Metacritic works and the way people look through those ones is they look at the score next to the thing. They don't read the reviews underneath. No. And the big score next to the thing is the critic score, not yeah. the user score. Yeah. User score's done on stars. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was, that shocked me at first. I was a little bit like, oh, shit. Okay. But I'm sticking by the guns. We're not gonna. We are not scoring the game anymore. Good. Um, I don't know where we go after that. Well, I I thought it was, when you told me this was the topic, I thought it was quite funny because it was like, well, what am I going to say apart it's from? It's more good. Yeah, it's more because, <laughs> as I said to you, yeah, because we is a big drastic change to the way we do reviews. Yeah. And we managed to build up a nice little community over the last couple of years. I didn't want people. I, I didn't want to just do a video, a ten minute video on how we do reviews because that's just a bit boring. Yeah. Um, so I thought if I had it on to the end of the podcast we could also talk about our opinion on review scores overall and, and things like that so I can yeah. see review, sc- review scores are really good for getting people just as a quick catch yeah. in they're like oh that's a 9.2 let's find out more about it and I get that and that, and I do get that and it's really important but I think there are so many places out there already doing that Yeah, we don't need to no I, I, I like people who um, I was talking to your brother actually about this the completionist I like people who recommend like um is it like buy now wait for on sale yep. avoid things like that yeah i mean the completionist is his own entity because that guy how he does it i don't know but fair play to him he's got well he's got a decent team around him yeah. now as well which allows him to be able to try and complete those games and fucking good on him man yeah. jesus yeah Christ. i remember watching uh or on the kind of funny podcast listen to his in, they interviewed him about when he done breath of the wild in one week Fuck like yeah. And because because there was that was before the map update release, and he said he had he he drawn a map of the oh my hi, God, uh, yeah. Hyrule yeah. on the on the wall, and he had like pointers like pins all over it of like well that's what that was that was that was because he had to do every shrine he had to do everything, yeah. uh, and he said that was the game that made Broke. him nearly quit was like yeah. I'm not doing this anymore <laughs> I've had enough, uh, but no so that's like, that's where we sit on review scores now guys uh, so there will be no more review scores on Indie Credible. That does mean the website will have a bit of a shake-up because I'm not going to go back and delete all the yeah, reviews from the old ones. But the new ones, uh, the way it's set up will slightly change because it's currently set up in the moment to kind of promote our reviews at the top, but that's not going to be the case. Um, but yeah, give it a couple of weeks and, and the website will be back to where I want it to be. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap up on things, isn't it? That yeah. is it. That's the Indicator Podcast, Season 2, Episode 8. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. Uh, watching, listening, checking us out. You know, you checked us out. I know you did. Uh, you're only human. There's def- definitely someone. Someone checking you out. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Nice. Um, but <laughs> no, thank you so much, guys, for stopping by. Um, as always, you can find us on YouTube. So if you was just listening, but you wanted to see any trailers, maybe you want to check out 3D Realms' new Wrath Aeon of Ruin trailer, 
Come over to Incredible. Come over to Incredible.com. No, don't go there. Go to YouTube.com forward slash Incredible. <laughs> go to uh, the video and you can see the trailer playing behind us. You can see actually as we're talking about it. So many games that we, we spoke about at the very beginning, all the trailers, all gameplay will be playing uh, behind us on our little computerized screen. Um, if you do like what we really do, guys, or you really like what we do, then hello to patreon.com forward slash Incredible. Link is in the description below. Uh, you can throw us $1 a month and you get exclusive access to pre and post show content. You get access to our Indie Credible Discord where we jump on, we play lots of games with the community. And you get a week early access to the Not So Indie Show, which you guys will be getting this week, but the patrons have had it for a week. Uh, and you also get access to a new monthly oh, video yeah. Dev where update. I am kind of currently delving into the world of game development. And there'll be a monthly game dev update video from me talking about my game, what I've learned, my coding, all that stuff, um, which you don't have to watch, obviously, but you get access to it just for $1. That's a lot for $1. It's a hell of a lot for one dollar. Yeah, I mean, we're going to buy a coffee in a minute for uh, about three quid. That could yeah, be, yeah. That could literally get you four months of incredible goodness. Yeah. That's amazing. Go do it now. Don't be an idiot. Um, <laughs> that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, until next time, you stay incredible. Bye.